Mr. Speaker, I have, to, I have to say to them that defence spending has continued to rise in real terms, uh, in contrast to what happened in the last years of the Conservative uh, government. I, I, have to, I have to say also that in addition to the defence budget, we have put aside $14 billion for the campaigns in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I want to tell them that our budget in cash terms is still the second largest in the world. Order. Statement Secretary Ed Miliband. Well, the Speaker brings an end there to the last Prime Minister's questions of this parliamentary session. Uh, a question time dominated really by the recent sad events in Afghanistan. Plenty for Phil and his guests to talk about in Cardiff. Yes, thank you, uh, David. And uh, watching uh, questions with us today has been Dennis Campbell, editor of UK Progressive. And you thought, Dennis, actually looking at that, I mean, there was a lot about Afghanistan, obviously, and the resources for troops, but you thought there was, there was, there was too much emphasis on that. You weren't too impressed by either of the leaders, were you? Well, Cameron or Brown? It was an interesting situation because you had um, an opportunity for David Cameron to ask a question, back away, from the issue and move on to another issue, yet he came back with what seemed to be a question that was already asked and answered, and I'm clearly not trying to say that any one political system is better than the other. And if I were to look at, at Barack Obama, for example, yes, how would he in, have in that it? box, he would have said, look, we've made mistakes. We probably didn't handle it the way we should have. And then he would have gone on to say, this is what we're going to do step by step by step, which we, and, and most recently, you know, in, in the, uh, the, the Italian. The difficulty for, for there, though, is in terms of uh, Brown. I mean, he has been in power throughout this, part of a government throughout that this Afghanistan issue and the Iraq campaign as well, whereas Barack Obama can blame the previous administration, can't he? I, and, and I haven't seen an awful lot of blame. If, if, you, if you watch the way he goes about it, he sort of steps back and he says, yes, mistakes were made. And he really is wanting to put a fine line under it and move forward and say, we, we need, to, we need to move forward from there. I don't see a tendency on the part of either the Labour government or the Tory uh, opposition to ever admit to having made a mistake along the way or to acknowledge the, uh, the question as being asked. Instead, it's never, that's, a, that's, a, that's never said in, in British politics, is it? No, it's that, not. That, you know, we, we, mistakes were made. We made a mistake. That, but never You think actually it now is a time for politicians to start doing that here, do you? Well, from the whole concept of what we were talking about earlier about trying to establish a dialogue with the voters, uh, there's nothing more powerful than somebody saying, look, I've made a mistake or mistakes were made or our administration did not handle it the way in which we should. That said, there were even instances when going back and looking at the setup for the stimulus bill in the United States where they said, look, we didn't actually say that, we said this. So there's always a certain amount of, of, of political parsing of statements and, and um, for, for lack of a better word, I call it weasel wording so that we can get around something that we're less <laughs> comfortable with. And at some point, it is very effective to say, you know, to, to be totally frank with the voter and say the situation has changed. And because it has changed, we're changing to move with it. Uh, what, about, what about Nick Clegg then? Because you, I mean, interestingly, you were quite, quite impressed by him, weren't you? I was impressed by him. I see uh, that, the, that the, the Liberal Democratic Party has an opportunity to really make a stand and offer a choice. That said, I haven't seen any indication that they're really willing to step out of the traditional comfort zone of campaigning. Uh, if I look back to what it was like in Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina uh, a year and a half ago when the presidential election was starting, here everybody knows that an election is going to happen sometime in the next nine or ten months. I don't see a lot of the really hard ground grassroots work that needs to be done to build a base and support. People are relying on traditional party structures, traditional brochures, traditional methods of putting things in the mailboxes. Before we go, time for a quick final chat, chat with my guest, Dennis Campbell, editor of UK Progressive. Um, I've got to mention this in the short time we've got left, uh, looking back over the year, expenses. I mean, it has been so dominant, but it's amazing how these things sort of emerge, don't they, come out of nowhere almost, to upset things politically. Indeed, and, and if you look back at where Gordon Brown was at the moment that the expenses row hit, 
he was actually starting to turn things around on his own personality side as well as the polls. He was actually beginning to show some strength. And I had just interviewed a, a Democratic strategist at the time who said he actually thought that were things to remain fairly even keel, there was enough time between then and the election that he could actually ride this out. And then all of a sudden, the expenses round hit. And I find it very interesting because you really had this sort of thing in the early 1990s in the U.S. with the U.S. Congress because the same sort of, uh, you know, shadow expenses and crazy things being built. And they just came through and they said, look, we're going to give the members of the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate a livable wage. They're going to have that increased in index to inflation, so it will grow at a certain percentage over time. We're going to give them a certain amount of staff. That staff is based on seniority. That's, th that's how they've approached things there, because you were actually in Washington when this scandal broke. I was what indeed. Was the reaction? We, were, we were supposed to yeah. be talking. Um, you know, it, was very, it was very interesting because it did get about two minutes uh, on a 20, which is uh, pretty that it was uh, something that was going on. However, it didn't have anywhere near the depth of being on every single newspaper page as, as it was here. But they resolved it, in a sense, in America by, by paying a lot more in terms of salaries. Indeed, and that's for, you know, in essence, 450 members of the what would be the U.S. Congress as opposed to the mm. 630 or so members of the House of Parliament plus the House of Lords. So you, you do have a, a scale issue here that you would have to deal with. And it did take care of certain things, but it didn't take care of everything because obviously you have a lot of what's called soft money out there from political action committees and, and lobbyists and other sort of groups that want to move an issue. So what they'll do is they'll give you a campaign contribution to run your re-election campaign. Dennis, thanks very much indeed. That's Thank you. Uh, all we've got time for. Thank you for joining us. Dennis Campbell there of UK Progressive Magazine, because that is it for today. Uh, thanks to my guests, and most of all, thanks to you for joining us over the last political year. Have a good summer. AMPM will be back with you in the autumn. Dennis, thanks.